Thanks, Ravi. So uh, my brief was to uh, talk about uh, development cooperation or uh, aid and to uh, uh, start with the question about uh, what is the uh, single, single uh, major shift in uh, thinking uh, that uh, has brought about a uh, change in aid. And so, you know, aid has changed so dramatically over time that it was quite difficult to pinpoint any uh, one thing. Uh, and I uh, decided at the end that probably the best answer would be to, to uh, suggest that sometime in the late 1990s, people decided that aid could really be a powerful tool for poverty reduction. Uh, there was a, uh, before that, aid had always been organized essentially as a relationship between countries. It was a government-to-government -government, uh, transaction, and the principal purpose, as Rowington uh, said in his uh, introduction, was really about alliances. Uh, aid was uh, an effort to integrate countries into, a, uh, uh, into a, either a Western uh, alliance or aid from uh, the former Soviet Union into, a, uh, uh, into an Eastern uh, alliance. Uh, but it was always seen as a way of building country relationships rather than of uh, poverty reduction. And then at a certain period, all of that really changed and people started to uh, uh, realize and understand that aid could really be a powerful tool for poverty reduction. Uh, and I think that that also uh, uh, reflects uh, Armando's uh, point that over time, perhaps with democratization, uh, people came to understand that governments had a responsibility in their own countries to, uh, uh, to try to reduce uh, poverty. The change, I think, in that, uh, uh, in that thinking uh, happened partly because of changing initial conditions. Uh, in the early stages of, uh, the, uh, uh, the, of uh, aid, poverty was so large, was so deeply entrenched, the level of aid resources was so small that thinking that aid could have a really significant and substantial impact on poverty reduction was rather wishful. You know, aid was always seen as being a drop in the bucket. And then around the turn of the century, you started to have numbers that suggested that you could do much, much more with aid. So the number of people living in extreme poverty was starting to come down to somewhere between one to uh, two billion uh, people uh, in the uh, world. The average poverty gap was starting to come down to somewhere like $100 per person. So you had numbers for the global poverty gap that started to look more like 100 to 200 billion. Uh, and you had aid levels that were in net terms, uh, running at about $100 billion, uh, uh, dollars, and then lots of other sources of funding uh, uh, as well, so that you could start to conceive of a match between the amount of resources that were available internationally and the quote-unquote needs for actually ending uh, poverty. And that actually gave rise to a whole series of exercises of uh, 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 costings of what ultimately became the Millennium Development Goals and the international, uh, uh, the international description of what it would actually take to, uh, uh, to end poverty. In the MDGs, the goals weren't structured as being ending poverty, but they were structured as being very much focused on what could be done to uh, uh, improve uh, people's, uh, uh, improve people's uh, welfare. Now, those exercises, I think, in uh, costing, uh, I'm looking right at Shanta uh, right now, uh, were uh, difficult, uh, to say the uh, least. Uh, but I think that they did serve a very valuable purpose in uh, really positioning the objective and purpose of aid as being something about improving people's welfare. It's not so much that this was a new idea, because 
McNamara at the World Bank had talked about basic needs as far back as the 1970s. I think what was different, what was really the change, was that this started to be accepted as a political argument uh, rather than as an economic uh, uh, argument. The other reason, I think, for that change in thinking is that uh, uh, is the collapse of the former Soviet Union. With the collapse of the former Soviet Union, suddenly the idea that the whole purpose of aid was to build country alliances and in some sense this competition between uh, uh, East and West kind of fell away. So people needed, and as in, instead of that resulting in a major peace dividend, actually exactly the opposite happened, at least as far as aid and development cooperation went. You got a fall in resources going into uh, international uh, uh, cooperation, uh, both bilateral and uh, multilateral. And so you really needed some alternative way of mobilizing resources and uh, uh, garnering the kind of support for development cooperation that would be needed. And what turned out to be the politically most powerful argument was that aid could actually do something to help the lives of poor people. So it really did become, from a political point of view, something that became uh, truly important for generating support for uh, larger aid budgets. And it is the arguments around uh, reducing or ending poverty which have uh, so far really managed to uh, maintain the targets of 0.7% as being uh, at least on life support and not completely uh, dead. So what are the consequences of this uh, shift? First and foremost, I think, is uh, the uh, idea that actually aid should be about what people want and need, and poor people in particular, rather than about what countries want and need. And uh, that has generated, I think, a much broader agenda. And when you start to ask people about what are the things that they care about, you get into a whole range of issues that were previously not tackled by the aid business. So you start to uh, get into issues about uh, <coughs> governance, corruption, human rights. Uh, it's a uh, much, much broader uh, uh, agenda, I would say, than, uh, uh, than before. Second, I think, as you start to get into uh, what is it that people uh, uh, want and need, and as you get into these ideas of uh, aid as a tool of uh, soft power in the uh, post-Soviet uh, um, uh, Union collapse uh, world, you've had a tremendous uh, amount of fragmentation. Uh, everybody can make a contribution to ending global poverty, both at home and abroad. That's a good thing in terms of the volume of resources. It's quite a complicated thing in terms of the organization of uh, resources. And so uh, I think one consequence of this uh, change is that because more and more people now feel empowered to act uh, you also get more and more overlap. And with that additional overlap comes additional waste and fragmentation. Uh, I think you've also seen a decline of the growth agenda and much more short-termism, because as people uh, uh, focus on, well, what can we do for poverty? They want results now. Uh, <laughs> whether that ends up being a positive or a uh, negative uh, development, I think still needs to be uh, seen. But I think that there's no uh, question that there has been uh, a uh, fairly dramatic uh, uh, shift uh, towards much more immediate impact. Uh, and that means focusing on a, uh, uh, on a few sectors, uh, things like health and education, where it's quite easy to see uh, reasonably immediate results, uh, and has led people to really shy away from the uh, longer term, uh, usually uh, uh, system wide investments or institution building investments that you could uh, uh, that you could have. And then I'll close by saying that at least one consequence, I think, 
is that there is now a single idea, which is that we have the resources and the technology and the knowledge to actually end, end extreme poverty globally by 2030. And that is at the heart of the new sustainable development goals that are being uh, uh, considered for the post-2015 uh, uh, debate. It's something that's been talked about for 60 years, but always just as a matter of rhetoric. Now I think finally people are uh, actually uh, talking about this in a much more serious uh, way and starting to uh, develop specific plans, resources, organizations, accountabilities in order to try to make this a reality, uh, not just in terms of uh, income poverty, but also in terms of uh, many other dimensions of poverty. Thank you.